Well, it's good to have you back and I hope you enjoyed that little bit of jollity. Uh, it is a serious situation, but we can still be happy, still be joyful. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Now you'll be aware if you watch the news that many companies have had to put people on furlough because they've lost their income stream and uh, we're no different as a church. We've lost all of our hirers that uh, use our building and also uh, we've lost uh, cash that normally comes in on a Sunday. We're so grateful to those of you who do give through standing order though. Many have asked how they can still give, how you can still give. Uh, your cash offerings or your envelope offerings and later in this section Mark's going to share with you how we can do that. But now I just need to bring some uh, information to you on behalf of the trustees. The trustees met this week and looked at our financial situation and uh, have made the following decisions. We are grateful to the government for giving us this opportunity uh, to put people on, on furlough uh, and still pay them their salaries. It does mean that they're not able to work for the church but because the centre is now closed, uh, there's not too much work that can be done anyway. And so, after much prayer and thought and discussion, on Monday night the trustees uh, made the decision to put the administrative staff and the building staff and the uh, catering staff uh, on to furlough. Uh, so that means Angela, Carol, Tara, Sarah and Glyn uh, are at the moment on furlough, but they're still being paid. The government are giving us... 80% uh, or we have to apply for that 80% of their salary and the trustees decided to continue paying uh, their, the 20% which means they're on full mm. salary. So it, hard decisions Margaret but yes, it is. Uh, after much prayer um, I think it's the right decision yeah. and it enables us to continue uh, functioning over the next few months. Mm. The trustees also discussed pastoral and ministry staff that is uh, Margaret, myself, Richard and Mark and they felt that at this time of, of crisis uh, the ministry and the pastoral staff need to be available even though it's, it, it's by video or by telephone or by WhatsApp um, because we couldn't even do that if we were on furlough we would not be able to do any kind of work at all uh, for the church we couldn't even make a telephone call to inquire how you're doing because that would be seen as part of our pastoral responsibilities and we're so grateful to uh, the government that have, have made this offer but at this moment in time, the trustees feel we can keep going uh, and keep the pastoral and the ministry, ministry side uh, employed. Uh, so do pray about these situations mm. and uh, we don't know how long this is going to go on. Mm. And uh, our reserves are uh, not as big as they used to be. Uh, but with your help and with your prayer and with the government backing, we hope that we can continue to provide uh, pastoral care and uh, ministry care uh, for all of our people. So thanks for that, John. Difficult times, but we think um, God's grace will pull us through and we are grateful to God for our government and all that they're doing at this time. So do remember to pray for them as they make these vital decisions around the coronavirus. So on that same theme of keeping connected, really, we wanted to encourage you again to uh, join our Facebook page, our partners page, and also just to keep an eye out for anybody or ear out that you might think is not quite as connected as it would be good for them to be. If you do think of anyone in that category, please ring Richard or Jean and they'll make every effort to make sure that they're connected in. You are doing a fabulous job of connecting with one another. We see that and hear stories of that and we are so proud of you for that. It's amazing that our community in this time of separation actually seems to be coming closer and closer together and we are grateful to God for that so keep on doing that well done and another way we want to keep connected is we want to ask you that if you've any good news stories or testimonies to tell during this time then we'd love you to send them to us so that we might be able to read one or two of them out uh, as the weeks go on if you want to do that We'd just ask one or two things. First of all, that the testimonies are about just a hundred words long, and also that you send them to me, Margaret at the well, rbc.org, and then we'll see if we can share them. Really is exciting when we can just share, share good news, even in these difficult times. 
So we'll leave that with you to think about and we look forward to hearing some of those emails come through. And now over to John. Well, I don't know what you were doing on Thursday night, but the nation was uh, out clapping mm. and supporting the NHS and care workers again. And many of you have been suggesting that it would be good if we had a regular time of prayer uh, where uh, we can all pray at the same time we can say the Lord's Prayer and pray for our nation. And so I've been thinking for a while of what would be the best time. When you were praying for my, my cancer situation, mm -hmm. we all prayed at 1404, uh, which was our wedding anniversary day. And so I've tried to look through the scriptures to find an appropriate time when we could all pray together at the same time in our homes, but we're all one voice mm -hmm. together unto the Lord. And so I've come up with 714. So we can pray at 714 in the morning or 714 p.m in the evening or, or both occasions. I've chosen 714 because it's from that uh, chapter about prayer, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. I'll read it to you now. God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. So by gathering together regularly, even though we're in our own homes, as we said earlier, we may be uh, scattered, but we're not shattered. We are humbling ourselves. We're seeking God. Let's seek first his presence in prayer. Let's be thankful in prayer. Mm. And let's confess our own sins. And then let's pray for our land. 7.14 in the morning, 7.14 in the evening. I call you all together to pray for our nation, to pray for our health service, to pray for our care workers, to pray even for our refuse collectors, mm. because without them we would be in a, uh, an even more delicate predicament in terms of health. So please, please join us at 7.14 every day. And now I said uh, uh, previously that Mark's going to speak to us about how we can uh, continue to make our offerings unto the Lord. And so Mark, it's over to you. Hi. I've been asked to share a little bit about how you can give now we're doing church online. If you normally give electronically or by standing order, you don't need to do anything different. Thank you ever so much for your gifts. If you normally give by cash, uh, you put the money in the bowls at the front of church, uh, you put money in the baskets as the baskets go past, or you fill an envelope as part of our envelope scheme. We have a couple of other options for you to use at the moment. You could set up a standing order with your bank uh, or you could use internet banking to make a transfer to us. And our sort code and our account number will be going along the bottom of the screen now for you to use. Maybe you uh, can give, but you want to use your credit card or your debit card. We have a PayPal account you could give by. And the details for that are in the description below and are available on our other pages as well. Maybe you're a bit overdone with all this internet stuff maybe you want to stick to cash cash is still okay we're just going to ask you to keep hold of that cash keep putting it in your envelopes and just save them until we can meet together that's definitely a way you can give to god your tithes and your offerings thank you ever so much for what you do give to church it is greatly appreciated there's just one final thing i need to say before we go back to John and to Margaret. And that is next week's service. We were hoping to be able to do a live Zoom service uh, at, on Easter Sunday for you. Unfortunately, uh, we have decided that we need a bit more practice before we can uh, make that happen. And so we're gonna stick with this format for next week. So next week will be a service like this, working through a YouTube playlist. Bless you all and see you all soon. So thank you Mark. As we now move into communion, we're going to worship again and the song invites us to come to the altar. <laughs> 